So tonight, what I'm going to be going over is tips and tricks to how to photograph bubbles. And you're not supposed to just use any soap. I was told that you're supposed to use not the Alta or Ultra or whatever form of the soap. But we're going to be going over how to get those frozen and photograph them. And then we're also going to talk about doing the snowflakes. As I was pretty, putting all this together, I got real nervous and I called Tim or I messaged him and I said, I don't think I can get all this in, in one thing to do both. So the main bulk is going to be on the frozen soap bubbles. I'll touch a little bit on the snowflakes. So if you came tonight just for the snowflakes, flakes, I'm sorry. So here we go. So I first want to say that I am not an expert at this. This is a new genre of photography for me. I just started this winter. But in that short amount of time, I have come to master some things and then not master a lot of things. So I'm very new at it. So I want this meeting to be a give and take. I'm going to tell you how I did things. And if you know a better suggestion, I want you to give that back to me. And it's just going to be a give and take kind of meeting. And then for the beginner, we're, we're going to go over cell phone photography. I'm going to go over very basic stuff that the advanced photographers would know. So if you're an advanced photographer, please just forgive me while I help the ones that are beginners. I was told by a member that they wanted some things that were aimed toward beginners. So I'm going to touch a lot about that tonight. And then my first attempts, if you could have seen me in my front yard, my regular soap bubbles, blowing them, and it was really cold outside and thinking they were going to freeze. They popped as soon as they hit the ground. I had no idea what I was doing. So through a lot of trial and error, uh, I'm going to show you all this stuff up here tonight. But what I would suggest to you is the coldest time is first thing in the morning. So have everything all prepped out. I even put my clothes out the night before and all my warm stuff so that as soon as I get up and it's really cold that I could get started. But we're gonna go over temperatures and all that kind of stuff of when you should shoot them. So this is one of the ones that I've got. I got the day, it was either the day it snowed or the day after. And we're not gonna talk a lot about processing, but clarity is your friend. And so I used, clarity mainly just on the bubble and then in the background I played a lot with the shadows so when I wanted the shadows to be kind of opened up I did that but in this I left it dark uh, but I really liked it but there's a couple things in this I learned the hard way that I don't like about this photo and one is right here and I know you probably may not even noticed it but I call it a bubble skeleton after the bubbles pop they their little discarded body parts are left everywhere and I don't like them in my photos or, or my videos. The next thing is this particular way that I photographed this. I used a small lid and right here you can see where it was dark. So I wish that I would have had a lower angle to photograph that so that would not be showing. But this is, it's just amazing. And if you've not ever watched them, which I do have a couple of videos, watching them is even more amazing. We're gonna talk a couple of ways how to photograph snowflakes. This was not your focus stacking and photographing a million little slivers of it and putting it all together in Photoshop. This is trying to get the focal plane of my camera to be directly in the same plane that the snowflake is. So as much of that snowflake can get in focus as possible. But when you're photographing at small, close distances, as Chuck would know, because he's the master, and Janae, if she's here, I don't think she's here, they're the master of doing things up close, bugs and insects and things like that. So we're gonna touch a little bit on that, but I have a video that you can watch if you wanna learn how to do focus stacking. But that's my snowflake, that's my daughter's scarf. I had that all laid out. I went through all her scarves to find the one that I liked. But you want to get one that has a dark color for contrast. So this is the first video. And I'm going to play that. And it didn't render very well. But the hexagonal little shapes at the bottom, I call this the first phase of it. And that's right after you blow it. The particles from your breath get trapped in there. And they're making crazy cool shapes and we're gonna talk a little bit about more phases of it. But this is my favorite part, and this is also the hardest part
to video and to photograph because the week that it snowed here, it was in its teens, and as soon as I blew a bubble, it was already starting to form crystals before it even hit the snow. So that's my favorite, and I like to keep doing it until all of the bubble, or most of the bubble in the front is totally frozen. So that's the, one of the first videos that I took. And this is the master of snowflakes. They actually gave him a nickname, Snowflake Bentley, but he was born back in the 1800s. And when he was 10 years old, he was enamored with snowflakes and he wanted to photograph them. He lived on a farm and his dad and his brother didn't think too highly of him running around doing snowflakes when everybody else was working on the farm. But his mom was a teacher and she had a microscope and he would go collect snowflakes and look at them underneath her microscope and he was just enamored with them. So the first picture of a snowflake was taken uh, January 15th. I can't even read it from way over here. Does it say 18 what? 18. Okay, so it was a long, long time ago. So he was known to, there's two different numbers that I got that he took over 5,000 photograph, photographs of snowflakes and another one said 6,000. But he died, I think, of a pretty young age. So, but this is really neat. He had a bellows camera. He put the telescope on the very end and if you see the little round wooden pulley he had that where he had a string attached to it so he could move it back and forth and get the snowflake in focus. And he would have from 20 second exposures to uh, two minute, yeah, two minute exposure. So he's basically the, the king of snowflakes. And then you have your modern day people. This is Don Kamarachka. He lives in Canada. He does the focus stacking and his snowflakes are absolutely just mind-blowing. And Don himself, in my opinion, is a genius. He knows all about light, and he photographs snowflakes, but he also photographs the snow bubbles. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of his work, but I reached out to him because I wanted to know what light he was using, and how did he do this, and how did he do that? Really nice young guy. This is, if you go to his website, it's doncom.ca. And this is, these are some of his images that he took. The one that's got the orange and it's kind of on the right, he's using invisible ink and he's using ultraviolet light from a flash where he specially adapted it so that you can see those different colors. Now I don't have, I don't even have a big girl flash. I call him a big girl flash. I don't even have a big girl flash. So what I did was I bought his flashlight. Well, something similar to his. His was 300 and something dollars. I wasn't gonna spend $300 on a flashlight. But the one I bought, I can't believe I spent that much. It was $99, but it, show, it does UV. It's tactical, it's a police kind of flashlight. But he is master. And here's his information, his website, his Facebook page, Twitter how you can reach him on email. He also did some work with BBC. He, uh, we right up Chuck and Janae's, right up their alley. He did the ultraviolet light off of a mosquito and he went millimeter by millimeter and photographed it all together and stacked it together. And then if you want to see his video, it's just in YouTube, just go snowflake, photo stacking with Don and put his last name and you will find that and you can watch it and he goes through all the details of it. He also has a book out called Sky Crystals and there's a link on his page about all his gear and if anything that I tell you tonight interests you, if you would buy through his website, it would help him just get a little bit of money so it's like a kickback for him. But I love the quote that he had on his website Pushing the limits of light while still producing visually stunning images is my passion. If someone is captivated enough to reevaluate the world around them, then I've done my job. Really, really nice guy. Highly recommend that you go look him up on all social media. So the one thing that I will tell you is don't wait until it snows in Athens, because it's very rare, to go try everything. I very much encourage you to try all these techniques I'm gonna go over with you tonight inside 
where it's nice and warm. And if you say, well, how can I photograph a snowflake inside? What I did is I cheated and I found a star. I guess it's one of those stickers you have when you're kids that were little stars. And this little guy is just a tiny little piece of paper. And that's what I was using as my example as I was doing everything. But Don will tell you if you take some super glue outside, let it get really cold, get a piece of glass that you can set this a pristine snowflake on, put the super glue over top of it, leave it outside for a day or so. Hopefully it will get cold enough here in Georgia to do that. The snowflake is going to melt and it's going to leave a snowflake fossil. And that's Don. That's not any of my doings. Yes. Question? Absolutely. How do you handle a single snowflake? How do I handle a single snowflake? Several different ways. Um, um, I did. I used a Q-tip a lot. A Q-tip, and I selected out the Q-tip that I wanted. What Don uses is a paintbrush, and I've heard other people that I've looked at their work. They actually did a toothpick, and being that they're really fragile, it's just moving them real carefully around with the paintbrush. So I had a little demonstration. I am a very visual person, and that's how I learn best. So if there's not any snow outside, I'm going to tell you there's no problem. Because you can go to racetrack, and you can get this pina colada, and it's mainly white. And then you have a cheese grater, and you can grate it. Or you can get a slushy, slush puppy from Golden Pantry. This is what I used tonight to grate the snow. And then you can blow the bubbles right onto the snow. So you don't have to have snow. It does need to be cold, and we will talk a little bit about temperature, but you don't have to have real snow to photograph these. So before y'all got here, and it's really wet, I took the grater and I grated up some snow. And it's probably mostly melted now, but it looks like, it looks like real snow and you take a bunch of different things and put a little lid or something in there like this and you cover that fake snow around and that's what you'll see in my pictures some of them and you set it on an object and then you blow the bubbles into that so here you would have your camera set up you have a straw and we'll go over this in just a minute too. And please put arrows on it because I can't tell you how many times I set the straw down and then I put my mouth on the wrong end. And I even did it once I had the arrows on it, but I, I caught on real quickly. So, and, and you need lots of these because I was on my balcony doing it and I ended up um, having them blown over the side. So for this example here, and, we're, and I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself, it's another slide, but there's several ways to blow the bubble. So here's my favorite recipe. This is also the one that Don uses. If you want to take a picture of it with your cell phone, it's six parts water, two parts dish soap. They say, for whatever reason, I have no idea, don't do the ultra. Um, I searched throughout Athens trying to find some. It's really hard to find. I think Joy soap was one of the ones that they said to use, but this was just a real cheap one, and it didn't have the ultra written on there. So I use that. But the key to the bubbles not popping is your white corn syrup. What happens in the bubbles when you mix it together is the corn syrup, after you blow it, is at the bottom of the bubble. And it serves kind of as a cushion in between the snow and the bubble. And what's fascinating to me, and I do want to videotape this, is after you blow it, all of a sudden, all that corn syrup starts coming to the top of the bubble. And it is, is beautiful. It's really beautiful. And I want to photograph that. Another thing that I want to do, or actually I want to videotape that. Another thing that I want to videotape, and I'm going to show you some colors of the bubbles, is when you blow the bubble to have all the different colors in it. And it's swirling around, and it's, it's beautiful itself. And I'm going to videotape that too. Just have to wait for some cold weather. I think my husband and I are going to make a field trip up north one day when it goes and snows and we'll be able to photograph snowflakes and do this. But my husband was really sweet the day that we did the 
frost flower. He got up with me at six o'clock that morning. I got up at 545. It was 25 degrees that morning. I said, oh, surely this is perfect temperature. The best though, and I'm getting ahead of myself again, is when it's in its teens. Because when it was 25, I had to even put snow, well, that time I didn't have snow, I used ice cubes into the solution to make it colder. And it eventually did freeze, but you want it in the teens. So back to our recipe. So the small batch that I made is one and a half cup water, a half a cup dish soap, a fourth a cup corn syrup. So I've read to use distilled water. Yes, instead of the corn syrup, people have added glycerin. There's another recipe where people added sugar and they said it helped with the crystallization. I personally don't like the sugar because I'm gonna show you one that I took with the sugar in it. And it ended up, even though I mixed it real well, later on that, that morning, it started crystallizing and I could see the sugar in the bubble. And I'm just in Lightroom, just trying to clone all that out because it just makes for such a better picture when you don't have little dots of sugar everywhere. Here are my terrible cell phone photos, but that is our fake snow. That's inside my house. You can see all the lighting from the windows. This is another way that I did it. I got a tablespoon cup, flipped it upside down. It had a little tiny gathering where I could put some bubbles in there. And then that's how this one was made. And I pulled the fake snow that I made apart so you can see. And in the very back, it's black. And that's from my husband's sweatshirt on a foam board. Just something to make it look a little nicer. And this was another thing that I did. I think I probably put a lid in the middle of that, made my fake snow around it. That table stayed a mess for a very long time. And tonight it's actually clean because all my stuff is up here. This is when I actually took it outside. There was no reason for me to do all of that when it was cold outside. I mean, it was really cold. So I took my little bubble outside, had my black sweatshirt on the foam board as my background. And then here's my little cheat that I did on it. So I had the camera pointed right at the little paper plate like I showed you over here and the fake snow on top. And this was actually what I did when it snowed. This is trial and error. Eventually, I was smart enough to put the snow on a paper, paper plate. And then I had a bowl turned upside down and then I had the lid to the bubble solution on top like that. And the reason that you see a trough going around it, same thing as the candle holder over here, the bubble will keep expanding out into the snow. So it's gonna again be a half dome. So I came up with digging my finger into the snow, clearing away so it would just mold into the shape of the lid. And this is worth a lot of time because here were my first efforts i pulled it away so you can see it it was terrible you see all this the bubble solution everywhere that's because i was trying to figure out how to do it but this was my very end part when i figured it out and i suggest too that when it does snow again what i did is i took a plastic lid very large and I just moved a lot of it to the corner of my my back deck so I had some for the next day and I also used this to get the snow out of the way because when I was videotaping I didn't want to hear my footprints in the snow as the snow crunched underneath so I moved it out of the way and this is a raw picture but like I said I didn't want to process all of them sorry but as you can you see the little white specks in it there's your sugar and it was a beautiful photo minus that now I could go back and clone them all out um, I like the be the blue hues for my lighting instead of brightening it up to the to the yellows but I really liked it minus the sugar in the shot Okay, we have a lot of gear to go over, and these are, this is mainly for the beginners, so advanced people hang in there with me, okay? So I have my, my camera, and we're going to get to this in a little while, but this is, I know you've heard the saying, you, you get what you pay for. 
I can tell you that that's not always the case because I bought something that was very cheap, this ring flash. It was $19.95. And what I really love about this is it doesn't matter what size lens that you have, they give you 50 million adapters to fit different ring sizes, yes! But you have your um, DSLR, and we're gonna talk about cell phone photography, I promise, we're, but I'm gonna have to get, really get going. Then you have your tripod. Uh, we're gonna go over how Don set up a lot of his experiments, but you have your tripod. He shoots handheld. I understand why he does that. It's because as soon as he blows that bubble, like I said, it's starting to freeze and he gets right in there and he, he does it handheld. He does a snowflakes handheld. I'm a tripod girl, so anyway, I'm gonna try next time it does snow to do both handheld and see how I do. I don't know how well I'll do though. So then you have your macro or micro lens. It depends if you're Nikon or Canon. But the thing that I hated about my Nikon macro lens, it's a 105, is my minimal focusing distance is only 12 inches. And I'm gonna show you some pictures in just a minute. So this is as close as I can get to something. So if you're photographing that tiny little snowflake, it's not gonna take up very much of your picture. So, but we have different things that you can use to get closer to your subject. You have your extension tubes, and these go in between your camera and your lens, and it helps you get closer to your subject. And you can start with one. This is the 36 millimeter, and then you can add the next one to it, which is, I should know that off the top of my head, 20 millimeter, so you can put those on top of each other. And then it has one more, and that's a 12 millimeter, and you can put that on there. And that all goes in between your camera and lens, and then you can get closer to your subject. And then if you even want to get closer, you can put a teleconverter in there. It's like a big magnifying glass. It lets you photograph things closer. You put that on there. Then you have a polarizer, and we're going to talk about that later, but that's right over here. Then you have plenty of batteries. You want to when you're outside to keep them next to your body so that the life of the battery can last longer. I put my hair bands on them or a rubber band on them to know that those are the ones that are already charged. And when I get through with them and they don't have anything on it, I know that they're empty. But you can put them back in your, in your pocket after they get cold and you can still sometimes get shots out of them, bringing them back out of your pocket because your body heat kind of charges it back up a little bit. Then I used a stool, which I did not bring. I didn't feel like I needed to bring a stool. Or you can do just the railing on your patio. And then we have what are called step up or step down rings. So when I buy a new lens, I wanna buy the biggest filters I can for whatever I need. So if I have a 77 millimeter wide lens, then I'm gonna get a 77 inch polarizer. But if I want to use it on mine that's only 62 inches, these little step-up rings go in between your lens and your camera. Not your lens and your camera. Lens and filter. Thank you. And then that way you're only having to buy one for multiple lenses. So these are wonderful and they're not very expensive. Where am I at? Then you have a diffuser. Now the day that I photographed the bubbles, I could have put this diffuser in between the sun and the bubble so that it wouldn't have been so bright, so it would have killed some of that light. But I love the light coming in on the bubble and just what it did for it, so it's great. And then if, it, if you still need more light, then you can use the silver or the gold part, put that right on top of the diffuser, and then you can bounce light back into your subject. I've already gone over the ring flash. That was my favorite thing that I bought. Then you have a remote trigger, shutter trigger. So your camera won't shake while you're taking photos. Let's see. So you can use this so that your camera's on the tripod. Everything's still, and then you can take the picture that way. And they have remote ones, but they're way too expensive. So I just got one that had the cable on it. 
And then a big girl flash, but like I said, I don't have one of those. Those are very expensive too. Now on the ring light, another thing that I did love is they do have a continuous light on there as well. And then what I would do is I would just have my heater inside because my fingers would freeze to death. And then I'd just run in and every so often my fingers couldn't handle it anymore. And then I would heat up my hands. So do you want to do it on bubbles? Well, look at what happens when this is inside my house. I'm not going to go outside for this when it's freezing cold. You remember when you're doing the bubbles, they're very reflective. I basically say they reflect 360 degrees all the way around the world. You can see in there. And that's the one thing I don't like about photographing the bubbles is I don't like seeing my reflection and I don't like to see my house in the reflection. So just think about that as you're videoing and photographing is, you know, not standing straight up or as you're videoing, you know, I bobbed my hand, head in and out and I didn't like that. So I learned a lot about not seeing my reflection in there. This is when it had the yellow adapter that I showed you on the ring flash. And I loved when it's starting to die, the starting to fall, but look how the light just is bending in there. And then this is one of Don's things. It's invisible ink. And I bought some of that. And I'm hoping I bought the right thing. I need to go home and make sure that I bought the right thing. But like I said, he does with the UV light. This is when I made a small, tiny batch with that blue ink. Then for the, the beginners, I just wanted to show you Again, you have your tiny, tiny little snowflake. I even put an F on it, so it was real small. This is what I was shooting on right here. So it was cl the closest I can get to that snowflake was this far away, it's 12 inches, so far away away. But I added the first part, the 36, put the extension tube on it and it goes to this. All right, that's the first one that's without anything, doesn't take up much of the frame at all. And just putting one on gets you that much closer. And then I added another, and then I added the last one. And then I put in the, the uh, teleconverter. And then finally I put on the up close filter. So that snowflake's pretty much almost touching all the edges of my frame. Well, pretty good compared to where we started. And here I titled this one A Forest of Trees because not only do they do little hexagons frozen all through it, but they make these little leaf structures that I thought were really cool. And again, I love the blue tones, so I could have made it warmer, but I love that blue tone. So other materials, when you're out in the snow, you don't want to get your gear wet, so you can get a little raincoat for your camera. Lens cloths, plenty of those. And you wanna make sure that you use your, your hood for the end of your lens. Two things, one is, and it might not help too much, but the bubbles burst. And when it, the bubbles burst, all that splattering gets on the end, end of your lens. So then that, it depend, the rest of the materials just depend how you want to blow your bubble. We've already discussed those. You have your small glass bowl. If you want to blow it in the cap, you can use a candle holder. I already said lots of straws, using a Sharpie to put the arrows on it. So we basically, that's just a review. Then the other thing you could do is cellophane. And they sell these by the roll at Michael's and they have different colors. And if you have a continuous light, then you can get cell thing, put it around it, and change your light a little bit if you want to do something like that. And then you have an external light source. Oh gosh. So I spent the $99 and bought this tactical flashlight. What I do love about this, not only does it UV light, it also has blue and it also has red. And then also if you want to do a long exposure, like you know a couple seconds it'll flash blue and then it'll flash red and then so in the same photo you get blue and red which i thought was really neat but so here's another one that i took of the hexagons but there again at the wrong angle and you can see i don't know i'm just real particular i don't like the darkness at the bottom and i wish that i would have piled up enough snow 
that you couldn't see that at the very bottom. And then temperature, we already talked about that. You want to, you want to have it in the teens when you're doing that. It, talked a little bit about this. If it's freezing too fast, I used my breath and I blew into the lid to make it warmer. Or you can, Don said he even took his inside and microwaved his. I uh, don't know how, he didn't say how long he did it for. Yes, he is in Canada. So he's, they're super cold out there. But to chill the solution, you can stick it in your freezer 30 minutes before that you go out to shoot. So before, right when you get up that morning early, go ahead and put the solution in or you can put it outside to let it start getting cold and the smaller your bubbles the less havoc that wind does uh, one day i also got my husband out there it was really windy and the wind was swirling all around and i just got a box and i asked him to help me and hold it over it and it worked a little bit and we tried an umbrella to try to block the wind but if the wind is 11 miles Stronger, don't even waste your time. And sometimes the gust, even if it's five miles an hour, mile an hour winds, even some of the gusts sometimes will pop it. So the wind is your enemy. So sometimes you just can't, can't do anything with it. But if it stops snowing, well, I got real disappointed because it didn't snow that much, is the freshly fallen snow is there and just very gently take a scarf, touch the top of the snow, and then lift it up and it's got tons of snowflakes on it. And then you just sift through and then grab your toothbrush and then just pull the ones that you wanna photograph out. And then two, it's all about the background. My daddy teases me all the time that I say that quote all the time, but it is. If you have a beautiful subject, person, inanimate object or whatever, and you have a terrible background, your photo doesn't look as well, and you know that. So you wanna look around on your little plate if you have everything all set up what i did was i just moved my plate all along the railing at my house trying to find the perfect background that i wanted and uh, made for a much better shot and we've already talked about the reflective properties you don't want to see yourself in it and we already talked about that corn syrup is going to race to the top and that would be a really good video. We already talked about that. And then the swirling colors also. Another thing that you can try to do is photograph them on a flower. Now, if you go to Don's website, he'll actually show you what a beautiful one looks like. This is just me going in my backyard. It wasn't even cold. It was this week. Just to show you, I try to get a clean background. But just the color difference in this slide and the next slide was just a couple of sec sec seconds in between. But you see the green on the outside and then a layer of yellow and then pink and a little bit of green in the middle. And you see my reflection. And then a couple seconds later, it's totally changed. So when you're taking videos and you're taking pictures, I would just say, just let the pictures fly. Just hold down on continuous and just take a bunch of pictures. But he, when he did his, if you go to his website, he even tells you how he does his. He has one flashlight, lit on the frozen bubble and he has another flashlight lit on the flower and it's really really beautiful here's another one and then again you see all the sugar i don't know if this is a raw file or not but i decided to pull up the shadows a little bit in the background and to get the different bokeh and the out of focus area and then it, the phases of the of the uh, freezing bubble but that's my favorite part is right when the crystal, as soon as it gets off the end of that straw, get the camera ready. And then the second phase is when they all start to interconnect and I showed you that on the video. And then the final phase, and people have taken slow-mo videos of these is as it's dying and it's shrinking or it explodes, there are videos out there of those too. So there's a couple of different phases, but make sure you get rid of all the little bubble skeletons. Um, so here's another photo. Again, I wanted the dark background. And here's another leaf looking one. And I shoot manual. If you are new, I do not suggest that you do manual. If you have a point and shoot, you can still do all this with a point and shoot or a cell phone. You don't have to have any fancy camera. And that's one of the things I want to stress tonight. 
And if you're new to photography, don't start in the manual. You need Photoshop and all that to add everything, lighting and shadows and sharpness and all that in. Uh, shoot something a little bit easier. You can maybe try aperture. And we've already talked about tripod versus handheld. And two, when I do this again, I'm going to try to really crop in to photograph the stars as they're beginning to show because that's one of my favorite things. But think about different angles. And then for Nikon, well, for my camera, the best ISO is 200. So see what the best ISO is for your camera. And you kind of want to shoot that. And then for your f-stop, just whatever your sweet spot is, where your sharpest is on your camera, then that's kind of where you want to go. And that just depends. And then what also depends is your shutter speed. If it's really windy, I can't give you a magical shutter speed that you can do because I haven't done this long enough. But I do know that when it was windy, it was crazy trying to get them still. And then just a little couple of other things is you always in anything, and you already know this if you're an advanced photographer, is you want to check every corner of your frame. And if there's something that you don't want in there, if you see a branch from a tree in the back ground of your photo and you don't want it in there, move your plate. And you always just want a clean background. And then clean your sensor too. And I, can, I can't do that myself. I'd have to get it shipped off. But one of my videos I even cropped because it had a nice dust spot on there. So, and then focusing is your biggest challenge too, along with the wind. And I'm still learning, but here's some things that I tried with the um, camera. As soon as the bubble was blown, I said, okay, I'll try this. And then I had it on the tripod and I really got in there. And then I was like, okay, maybe that wasn't the exact distance I needed to be. So then I got an inanimate object and I set it on there and I was like, okay, well, I think the edge of the bubble will come right here. And I focused on the nose of my, you'll see it as a reindeer that I have on my salt shaker and I focused there. And then another thing that I tried was the sun was out that day, so it left shadows on the snow. So I took a straw and I put in the snow where that shadow was and then I blew a bubble exactly the size of that shadow the next time. I tried all kind of crazy stuff, but I didn't try hand holding. And that's the one thing that I'm gonna try next time. So if you're doing the snowflakes, this is kind of intermingled in. If you don't want to, your camera to shake and you have it on the tripod, you can also come on your camera and then put it on timer and rotate that for how many ever seconds you want, two or five seconds then you can press it down, focus on the snowflake, take your hand off, and in two to five seconds your camera will take the photo for you. Um, manual focus, I tried that too. So I had the straw ready to go, I blew it. By the time that I got back to the camera to try to manual focus, I lost all the stars. That first phase had already gone by. And I even, like I told you, had my husband out there. That's the best thing to do is if you have another person that could do it with you, is to have them blow the bubble. You're already back behind your camera. And as soon as that bubble is finished, how big it's going to go, then you're right there ready to take it. So that's the easiest thing to do. But all the times that I did it, I didn't have a second person to help me. And then uh, I also thought about having wind chimes and put a set of wind chimes in the backyard while you're video, and then you can have lots of beauty, beautiful noise. And you all know that your best times to photograph are early morning, late evening. And think about how you want it lit. You can have it bat lit, you can let, light it from the side. Uh, you could do your ring flash if you want to have the ring actually showing in your photo. You could do a big girl flash, or I just did natural light. And then nighttime is a little bit different, and I'm going to show you in just a second how Don set up his little experiments. but. There's a bunch of different ways that you can um, set it up. He would take a tripod, he'd put his flashlight, which is much bigger than mine, he'd put it on the tripod, and we're gonna talk about this, but this is a Fresnel lens, and the light would shine through the Fresnel lens, and then his bubble was way down here. And then he would photograph the bubble, but I have pictures, he actually was so sweet, he actually sent pictures um, to my email, so I have that to share those with you. But you also want to um, think about 
what you actually have it sitting in. If you have it sitting on a white cap like this, you're gonna see a white cap at the top of your bubble. So I even thought about taking black paint and painting this cap so that it would, I don't know, I think it would be less of a reflection at the top than it would be on white. And also too, you wanna to have the lights off on the inside and outside of your house because those lights show up in your, um, and we've talked about a lot of this other stuff. Another thing I did was light painting. I actually have one of my bubbles had the number two in it because I think I just did real quick like this and light painting and it had twos all on the bubble which I thought was really cute. So here's his flashlight. Um, he didn't say tiny monster but he did say TM36. Um, I'm not spending $349 on a flashlight. Really surprised that I spent $99 on a flashlight and then it lasted a week. So. But here's the Fresnel lens. It does a lot. It can magnify things where you can read better. It helped lighthouses for that light to shine better a long time ago so the ships could see the lighthouse better. But he uses it, like over here, I have a picture. But, so here's his diagram. You can see all the snow up in Canada. So he has his million dollar flashlight. He's got the Fresnel lens. It is, it's $349. And then he flashes it that light through the Fresnel lens, and then down at the very end is the soap bubble. And there's a couple of other things that he does as well. Here's some more pictures. You can see how it focuses. Look at it at night, isn't that beautiful? You see the lighting that comes through that and the colors. But so there's three different ways, and you can go on his website and see how he does that. The first one shows the flashlight, the uh, Fresnel lens, and then he gets polarized sheets. Now these I haven't even taken the protective covering off, and he puts those on the Fresnel lens, and then he does the bubble, and then he has the camera. And he said he always just sets the flashlight up high enough where he takes a picture, and you can't see the flashlight. Then he does the flashlight, and then he does a CD case. And y'all know when you put this up to a CD, your computer monitor, what fun things that it does. But then he puts the bubble, and then I was gonna get back to the polarizer. He puts the polarizer on the lens and puts it to its darkest setting, and then he takes the picture that way. And then the last one, I made a tiny little batch with this invisible, I think it's called Ghost Ink, and I, I forgot how much it was for that bottle, but I made a very tiny little batch used a different straw, and uh, the ones that you saw earlier with the blue on it, that's where that came from. But he uses the visible ink instead of water, so you wanna make a real tiny batch, but he does the six, two to one, and then he uses the flash, and we talked about this already, that he adapted just to show UV light, and then, and then materials for photographing frozen bubbles and snowflakes, the cell phone. I'm not a cell phone girl, but, I love this little tripod, and it was not very expensive. I'll have the sheet up of that in just a second. And then it came with a remote trigger, which I love, is Bluetooth. And so all I have to do is point it once the cell phone's on and click, and I'm not having to worry about the cell phone wiggling around as I take the picture. It's wonderful. But you wanna make sure that your cell phone's charged, have lots of storage space, which I do not have on my cell phone. Use your remote trigger. And then they also have tiny little lenses. These were really, really cheap. I'll get to a slide in a minute that shows you how much they were, but you can get these that you can attach to your cell phone. Here's another set that actually came with a selfie light. I thought that was hilarious, but it's a continuous light. It does a bunch of different things. You just keep pressing the button in the back and it does different things to the light. And usually, like we said earlier, you get what you pay for. But if you buy the, the Olo clip, it's a lot more expensive. It's like $79 to $99. It, I'm sure we'll take a much better picture than the ones that I have. A, no, a note too is this little light only will stay charged for 50 minutes. So just remember that to have it hooked up to your computer and just have it fully charged before you get started because it doesn't last very long. And then your black sweatshirt again. And then when you're taking pictures of snowflakes, you can also shoot 
on an ND filter, you have a nice black surface. This needs to be super cold. The negative part of this, compared to a scarf or another thing, is there's more points of contact to the snowflake, so it's going to melt a lot quicker than maybe it just sitting on one of these little strands on a scarf. And then make sure your Q-tips are cold, your paintbrush is cold, everything needs to be cold. And that's how you move those around. And here's just my glove. I was outside and you can see very cute little shapes of the snowflakes even when I was outside. And that's just with my cell phone. And I can't even believe that it got that good of a picture of just my mitten. And then there is yet another option, which is this lady right here. She came up with getting a container, and in the bottom you can put different colored sheets of paper. I had all of these from when I did flower photography, so I had a bunch of different ones I got from Walmart. And you get a piece of glass. I use this from a photo frame. I covered it with duct tape on the outside so I wouldn't cut myself. And this is that press and seal. So you're going to see in just a second how you can see magnified all the little tiny bumps and things that they have in there. You can just use regular plastic. But this is exactly what she did. And she photographed just like that. There's her settings. She said they're usually ISO 200, F11, and 1 250th of a second. But she said make sure you put the glass outside 10 to 15 minutes so it can get cold. And then she didn't have a big girl flash either. She used her pop-up flash and this ring diffuser she actually put on that pop-up flash and then put some um, sh sheets on there as well to kind of buffer it a little bit more. And then she talked about cleaning the plate often with a paper towel because you'll get smudges of broken up um, snowflakes everywhere. And then yet another way is to get a reverse mount adapter. And so it would go between your camera and your lens, and then you'd flip the lens backwards and get it attached. And then that lets you photograph things up close. I don't know if Nikon has one. That's just, you probably don't. That's probably why I put Canon up there. But they're $99.95 if you want to get those. And here are the pictures, my little tiny snowflake. That's with my daughter's lens. I thought that was pretty good for a cell phone. And there's that little tiny snowflake example I've been using. Here's with the fisheye lens and the macro together. This is probably my error and that the cell phone is terrible. But th that, that fills the frame. And yet another way, this little guy, he is from Russia. He would take a stool, flip it upside down. He, same kind of thing, he put the glass. Now I couldn't do all of it and take the picture, but he would shine the light at an angle, not really so much straight up, but he said to use a bag that had different colored writing on it. This one was from Belk, and it had a lot of neat little blues on it. So then I tried it, and of course it's not opaque, it's paper, so it's dark, but those are pretty cool. And then if you're shooting with a camera and a macro, macro lens, make sure your scarves are cold. We've already talked about doing it on the tripod. And I like to shoot live view when I'm doing the snowflakes. So for the new people, you just press on the live view there. And then you use your plus and you could just zoom in. And then you can use that to focus a lot easier. But it does drain your batteries a lot. So make sure you have a lot of batteries charged when you get, before you get started. And we've already talked about Don, how he hand, handhelds it. I, I just don't see how he does that. But he does say that you need to make sure you underexpose a little bit. Check your histogram just to make sure that you're not um, getting a lot of burnt out areas on your, on your photo. And then too, with your scarves, is you want to check for threads because what's closest to the camera is you don't want to see a big bulge of lint close and it blocks your snowflake. So you just want to look for, I mean, it's just real particular, but you got to think about your photographing very small things. And your lighting, he stressed that, is it's very important that the angle of your light, so not like I was doing it while you're parallel, 
he has a ring flash like this, a really expensive one, and he is hitting it at an angle, so that light is bouncing back up into the lens, is how he does it. And then if you want to watch Don's video, he does have a video on focus stacking. Here is another one that I took, and these are the particles over here Then I would wet the Q-tip to get it warm, and I would just go touch all those other little snowflake parts and get them out so I won't have to clean that in Lightroom. And I don't know if that's a raw picture or not, but I thought it was kind of neat because half of it was a little bit different in transparency than the other half. So I thought it was interesting. And that's what you want to do is search through and find the best snowflakes and the ones that aren't broken. And here's another one that I took. This one was, here was the scarf. I had it on a stool and I propped the snowflake up to where it was parallel to my camera. So I tried to get as much as focus as I could. And then, so once you master this, I want you to let me know, okay? <laughs> I do have a few more trips up my sleeve. I don't want to share all them with you because I want to master them before I show you, but I do have a couple more things. But there's so many more things that you can do. You can try to do a bubble snowman, build a bubble, blow it, let it freeze, blow one on top of it, let it freeze, blow another one on top of it. I want to do one side by side <sighs> next time. Lots of things with dry ice. Get a glove, get some dry ice, put it in a bowl, Blow a bubble on top of that, and that bubble will float. It is the coolest thing. If you haven't seen it, go on YouTube. It's really cool. And another one you could do is get some warm water, put it in the container, get a bunch of dish soap, put it in there with a glove. You want to uh, put that dry ice in there after you've mixed it up, and it forms all these bubbles that are everywhere. Little kids would love it because when you smash it together, all the little smoky CO2 goes everywhere. It's really neat. And another one is the, a large bowl, and you get gloves, and you put dry ice and water. And then you take a soapy cloth, you go all the way around the edge of your bowl, and then get it real soapy again, and then you pull it as you're touching, going all the way across, and it traps the CO2 in there, and then it forms this big, gigantic bubble, and then it pops. It is so cool. And then just go on YouTube and put in there boo bubbles. I won't even explain that, but that is really cool. And then if all else fails, you can blow a bubble on a wand and stick it in your freezer, and you'll have a soap bubble. You didn't have to try very hard. And here's all the resources, or most of them. I hope that I put them all on there. Of the everything, the cell phone, everything. This should be all on there. The guy at the very bottom is the Russian guy, uh, the keys to December, and. Um, all of Don's stuff's on there as well. And then that's all my stuff. I'm everywhere. If you want to follow me on anything, I'll up.